Are you blessed by all the choirs from all over the world? Your church is huge. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to do this when you say huge. Paula, huge. Obey. Mm-hmm. Huge. Mm-hmm. God bless you. Amen. And um, I believe God is even taking us to more places for the gospel. Tell your neighbor, go somewhere, preach somewhere. And um, those of you watching on Facebook, um, comment as the preaching is going on. Say amen. Say what a word. Um, repost some of the scriptures to show that you are catching up. Your beloved may be on the on online also and may see your comment. Somebody told me that uh, he was watching. So a girl told me a boy came to talk to me because he was watching the flow service. And when I saw the comments that she was making, my heart was moved. So your beloved is online tonight. Shout amen. Well, I don't shout amen. Not yet. Amen. <laughs> And um, it's time for the Word of God, and it's, I'm excited. Um, as we go through the books, we realize that even though they were written years ago, they are even more relevant today. And um, that's the evidence of the prophetic mantle and the teaching mantle. And I believe we're about to sit at the feet of the serenity of the teaching anointing. And I believe it's going to be a blessing. Amen. So if you are as excited as I am, then it's time to sing nothing is impossible everywhere has a song this is our song in first love let's sing it nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God with a cameraman joining in nothing is impossible when you're trusting in Switzerland I hope you're singing hark into the voice of God Botswana is there anything to Abuja, Nigeria. Put your trust in God alone. And Tananarivo, Madagascar. Everything, oh, everything. Haiti, join us if you believe that everything is possible with God. On Tublo, Huma, crowd. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. From Takwa to Kumasi, when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible. Birmingham, Sheffield, Nottingham, and London. When you're trusting in His word, hearken to the voice, Sweden. To the voice of God. Is there anything too hard in Dominica? Is it too hard in Dominican Republic? Is it too hard in, in, in America, in Canada? And let's rest upon His word. First love all over the world. Declare that everything. Every single thing is possible with my Jesus. Who is now put your hands together as we welcome our pastor, Job Dag, he was Mills, hallelujah. Father, thank you for this great opportunity. Please lead us into your word. In Jesus' name we ask, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, God is going to speak to you by his angel and by his Holy Spirit. Wherever the Spirit is, there are angels. Now, what it means to become a shepherd is my topic. And today, my topic is found in chapter 10 of this book, which is, is the ministry work or rest. Amen. 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 Now, God wants us to become a nation of priests. This is found clearly in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, chapter 19. He said, If you will obey my voice in verse 5, all right, and keep my commandment, you'll be a peculiar treasure. Amen. Amen. And verse 6, and you will be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. Now, how many want to be special? Yes. 
to God. When you are special and you lose the opportunity to be special, when, what sometimes when you are being specially treated, you don't notice it. Till you stop being specially treated. Then you find out that, wow, that was special. But when special becomes ordinary, it's because of familiarity and sometimes it is because of stupidity. Isaiah 47. Notice, notice it says, you will be a peculiar treasure. You will be a peculiar treasure. All right? Beautiful. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. Verse number one. Now, God was angry with his children. Okay? And he decided to talk to them a little roughly. What do you think? Because he had told them, you're going to be my special baby. But they took it for granted. So in Isaiah 47, he said, come down and sit in the dust. Instead of sitting by me, you sit in the dust. O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. Wow. Are you going to sit on the ground? No, no, sit by me. There is no throne, O daughter of of the Chaldeans. No more throne for you. For thou shall no more be called tender and delicate. Notice. God changes his mind. You see, we take special things for granted. And God says, I changed my mind. You know, you were special to me, right? I hold you in my arms. I sing to you. I play with you. I hope you understand. He says, Thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. I'm not going to treat you that way no more. Tender and delicate, finish. Wow. Are you there? Why? He went on, said, so many things. Then he said, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered and thy shame shall be seen. In other words, he's going to show you that you are nothing. Because your nakedness is what reveals how zero you are. How many realize that when you look in the mirror, it's equal to zero? Huh? Or less than zero sometimes. Is it not true? Yes. As all the clothes we wear are to just cover up. And improve the appearances. True or not true? True. Thy what? Nakedness. Your emptiness. Why? Verse 7. I mean it's a lot of stuff. But this is just by the way. And thou said. You said I shall be a lady forever. You see. In your mind. You think everything is going to be the same forever. No matter what happens. There can be no change. And then what he says, that thou did not lay these things to thy heart. You see, you don't think deeply about some of the special things that God does for us. That's why you lose them. And God is telling us that it's a very special thing to be made a shepherd. It's a very special thing to become his peculiar treasure. The peculiar treasure God was talking about was a nation of shepherds. A nation of priests. That's what's special to him. The all nation doesn't have a nation of priests. Nation have nations of ordinary businessmen and people and whatever. But the peculiar treasure is the treasure of being a nation of priests and shepherds. And he says, you did not lay these things to heart. Are you there? Yes. Thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. So God, God I've, I've realized when you read about God changes his mind. You are special to me, but you didn't value it. So, since you don't lay it to heart, bling, out. Huh? Now, he said, therefore, hear now this, verse 8. 
thou that are given to pleasures and dwellest carelessly. Carelessly. You see, notice the word carelessly. And that says in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. You see, this again is what happened to Israel. They thought that we are the nation of the nation, special nation of God, this and that and that, you know. But God said, hey, I've treated you specially. You are so delicate to me. I've carried you on wings of eagle's wing, brought you to the Red Sea, did signs and wonders which are recorded in history today. But I'm nothing to you that you've gone to cut a wood and you are rather doing something with the wood that wooden tree is what is valuable to you. Really? Really? Thou shalt no more be delicate and tender to me again. You will not be my special, whatever. Danny Obana can be special and being mean a, 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 a tender is a special thing. <laughs> yes. Ole, you didn't know that they are treating you tenderly. Read this one again. He said, Come on, faster, man. Come down and sit in the dust, oh virgin and daughter. Sit on the floor now. Hey. Sit on the floor. No, you no more be called tender and delicate. I won't treat you that way again. Because my special treating you as a nation of priests, honor okay, is a special pain. We take things for granted when the specialness goes on sometimes for too long and you don't think deeply. That is why I want us to really appreciate all that the Lord has done for us, even as a church. We are sitting in one place all over the world. We are watching some on television. Some of you are no more using data. You are watching on television. We don't appreciate things. You are watching and whilst we are taking up, you can see cathedrals, church buildings, this and that, practically. We do things before we even mention them. Because I don't like to do something that I'll ever say, give this, and then it's not used for that. So, because sometimes there are things that happen between the giving and the doing, most of the time when you are giving, we have either started it or very advanced in it so that it cannot not happen. To avoid that scenario, but we don't take these things for granted. We live in nations. Nothing is done. Nothing changes. When we come to church, things are changing. Things are moving on. You know, God wants us to appreciate. He says, you didn't lay it to heart. You didn't lay it to heart. You dwelt carelessly. So I want you to know that God is telling us today that he is the God who changes his mind. Thou changest not, but he is very rational and very intelligent and superior in his thoughts and his wisdom. And he wants us to be a nation of shepherds and priests. So, as we are here, don't let us think there's anything too special. We don't lay it to heart. Which church do you have which has these books? Look at the Macarius and the things, plenty, and there are more books that are not in this Macarius. Look at it. I'm showing them Macarius. Look at it. An old book for everything. Book for marriage, book for this, book for that, book for everything. We don't lay it to heart. Yes. How to, how to, how to, how to. Huh? We don't take it seriously. <laughs> So, you see that some other group will come up and take the thing seriously. Hmm. All right. So, Ephesians chapter 4 in how to the ministry, the work of the ministry. I'm talking about what it means to become a shepherd. In other words, what it means to work. Okay. Ephesians chapter number 4. Amen. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, 
for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. All that you have to do is remove the comma. Just remove the comma, please, because the comma was added by the translators. When you remove the comma, the meaning of this verse changes dramatically. It says, for what? For the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry. You see, so apostles and prophets, evangelists and teachers are perfecting saints to work. Are perfecting saints so that saints will work hard. Do you see? Saints were raised up for work. Do you understand? I know this is the Bible, but if you had the power, you would have just been able to remove the comma, but you can't. If you remove the comma from after saints and the comma, please look into your, those of you in the house, don't just be lying somewhere. When, when we are preaching, now you are lying down and covered yourself. Is it in the night? Is it in the night? No, but ask yourself whether it's in the night. Okay, you can't lie down like that. that it's a bad attitude. You must dress up. From next Sunday, everybody has to dress up on Sunday in the house. You can't, you can't just wear your pajamas to, to, to stay and come to church. You are going to wear your, your, your Sunday best and then take a picture and post on Facebook that you are in church. Wow. Yes. Is it beautiful? Yes. So from next Sunday, the only thing you'll be exempted from is shoes. Yes, you have to dress up everything but without shoes. But you can also wear your shoes. Yeah. All right? Beautiful. It's working. So God is telling us in the NIV of this, uh, what do you call it? The NIV reader's version. Amen? What does it say? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12. The same reader's version. He gave some apostles and some pastors. All right. He gave pastors and teachers. I want to read it from verse 11. So Christ himself gave the gift of apostles, the gift of the apostles to the church. He gave the prophets and those who preach good news. He also gave the pastors and teachers as a gift to the church. So pastors and teachers are given as a gift to the church. Is it beautiful? Now, and he gave all these people so that they might prepare God's people to serve. Then the body of Christ will be built up. All right? Do you have the NIV reader's version? Huh? You're getting it. You're downloading it. You should have downloaded it because I keep quoting from that. It's an amazing Bible, right? NIV Reader's Version. I'm going to read it again. Shall I read it again? It's different from all the other versions so far. It says, so Christ gave himself, gave the gift of the apostles to the church. He gave the gift of the apostles to the church. All right? And he gave the prophets, and those who preach good news. So, he gave. Amen. And he gave some the gift of preaching the good news. And he gave some the gift to be pastors and teachers. No, no. I have NIV Reader's Version, please. Stick to my version. NIV Reader's Version. Alright? Now, verse 11. So, Christ himself gave the gift of the apostles to the church. He gave the prophets and those who preach good news. Full stop. And he also gave the pastors and teachers as a gift. Amen. To the church. Now, verse 12 says, He gave all these people so that they might prepare God's people to serve. Then the body of Christ will be built up. Is it beautiful? So God gave, I am an apostle, I'm a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, evangelist. Now, what am I for? I am a gift to the body, to the church. You see, that's why, that's why we don't talk about money. God doesn't say, I've given you money. No, the gift is the person. That 
person is the gift. Yes. The person is the gift. That is the blessing. Is the human being. People don't realize there are so many things far greater than money. You, you have your orientation in the world that money is everything, but it is not so. The person who is a gift, the, the gift to you is the human person that you see standing there. Is God's like, like grace and his dash or his privilege or his, his handout, his, his nice thing that he's giving you is the apostle or the prophet or the pastor. That is what the nice thing God has done for you is to give you that person as a gift. Yeah. It's far different from money. All right? So ministry is those gifts have been given to do what? To prepare the church to serve. So my duty is not to pamper you and to just prophesy nice things to you. How you are going to be rich, how you are going to be on top, how you are going to defeat your enemies, how your landlord will not be able to poison you. I mean, every it's not. this is not the work of, a, of these gifts. It's to prepare you to become servants or to do the work of ministry. Amen. Now, Saints are to be perfected for the work. This means that pastors are to perfect the saints so that they can join in the hard work of ministry. There was a man called Epaphras, a servant of Christ, always laboring fervently in prayers for you. This man was laboring. He wasn't resting. Throughout the Bible, I'm reading from my book. Since you haven't read it, I'm reading it to you. Throughout the Bible, ministry has been described as work. Always described as work. When Jesus saw the multitudes who were fainting because of the lack of a shepherd, he said the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. The Greek word translated laborer is the word egatis, which means a toiler, a teacher, a laborer, a worker. So, a gattis or labor, amen, is, has an amazing meaning. It means to toil, to travail, to grind, to push, to drive. That's what God is preparing you for. To come and join in the pushing and the driving of the work. So, you must become Involved in egates, spelled E R G A T E S. You must become involved in that, which is the pushing, the grinding, the driving, the toiling, the sweating, the hard part of the work. Whereas in most churches, everybody's sitting there, bless me, Pastor. Find some three jokes at the beginning, three jokes at the end, and then some two stories. Mention the scripture, don't say anything too hard, and please don't preach more than 35 minutes, and we have somewhere to go. We are going for family lunch at 12 o'clock. Wow. We need to be there on time. Don't go over time by even five minutes. That's not what we are in church for. Read your Bible. We are here so that the apostle, the pastor, will prepare the people to serve and toil. So that you also join in the drive and the push and the toil for the work of the ministry. That's what a, a pastor is for. Alright? You can read it all here. The ministry is toil and sweat. I have found that out practically. Anybody who wants to be a shepherd must realize that he's not embarking on a game. But real work. He will soon realize that being a pastor is not in title alone, but it's real toil and labor. If ministry is work, what does it involve? What type of work is ministry work? Now we're going into what type of work. But I want to say that, you see, you'll soon find out, and, and a lot of lay pastors soon find out, that ministry is more than a title. People were happy to get the title. Oh, I've been appointed as a pastor. <laughs> I've been appointed as a pastor. <laughs> this is my certificate, and this is my appointment with my picture. And my heart and my cross. But you soon find out 
that ministry is no gain. It's work. And that is how come you have a lot of lay pastors who are like a river that was flowing and entered a pond. And now you can't see any movement anymore. You see a placid lake. You don't know. Because when you see a lake, you don't know whether it's going or coming. It's just there. You just sort of go on it. That's why I was a bit surprised when I found that people really die in the Sea of Galilee. Because it looks, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It's just there, but it's apparently a dangerous place. Yeah. Every year, people drown in the Sea of, in the sea of Galilee. Yeah. So when Jesus, when he rebuked the storm, it was a real danger. All the 12 of us would have drowned. Yes. So, the work, sooner or later, you find out that, wow, this thing is hard work. Then they stop moving. And that's why many people, after appointment as pastors, they become a disappointment to the appointment. And they show us that we are really human beings. And that is why we made that appointment, not knowing that they are no nearer being pastors than being astronauts. You might as well have appointed them as astronauts. Do you know what is an astronaut? An astronaut is somebody who can fly a rocket to the moon. Yes. All right. That's an astronaut. An astronaut, usually you have to be an Air Force fighter pilot first. You must be a very wild pilot and know how to maneuver at the top speed because the kind of speeds and the pressures and the changes, you, you don't have to have sinus problems. You don't have to have headaches, blood pressure. There shouldn't be anything before you, you can just die. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, otherwise, the headaches, I mean, it will be too much. You'll be unconscious most of the time. Yeah. So you, you, you need to study maths, physics, and many things, rocket science, stars, everything, plus be an Air Force pilot, which is one of the highest levels of being a pilot. It's not uh, this pilot that we have here. They go up, down, twirl, turn around, do many things. You get it? And then go to the moon and come back. And you need to be brave and courageous. So to be an astronaut is not a small thing. So you might as well have been appointed as an astronaut, the first Ghanaian astronaut. When we appointed you as a shepherd or a pastor, because you are not, you are very far from being a, 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 a pastor. Yes, as soon as you saw the work, you dashed, and you wouldn't do it. Yeah, because work has certain important characteristics. Amen. And that is what people, when they find out that there is work involved, then they pull back. So I want to invite everybody to take God seriously and let us get involved in work. What are the five characteristics of work? Ministry work. No one can claim to have joined the ranks of ministry workers until his activities have got certain characteristics. An activity moves out of the realm of playing and joking and pleasure into the realm of work when it has the following characteristics. Everybody in church must realize that you are moving to another level. Amen. Amen. If you are involved in ministry and your activity does not have these characteristics, you may be doing something related to the ministry, but it has not yet become work of ministry. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. Number one, ministry has working hours. If you are part of the ministry as a lay person or a full-time person, you must have your working hours. Amen. Amen. It, it doesn't mean, all right, every true job has its own working hours. All right? This often confuses people. People think that pastors must be in the office from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But we are not bankers, nor accountants. We are pastors. No, one, no more banking hours for pastors. And nobody asks pilots to work from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Everybody knows that their working hours are peculiar. And everyone accepts that reality. Amen. So, everyone must accept 
that pastors have a time that they work. And what is the time that pastors work? We work, all right, you, you start to take hours, a certain time, and you give time. Amen. Amen. All right, you give certain hours. And you know that now my working time has come. And when it comes to the ministry, Sunday is your working hours have come. Yes, there are some jobs you work once a week. I mean, I know some doctors, they work three days and they, they don't work for, they work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They don't work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And they work Monday, Tuesday. Some people work two days and then it, it, they earn enough for the whole week. Yes. So when we work on Sundays, we have done a work for a week. That's why when somebody invites you for Old Boys Association, they're having a party on Sunday. They like choosing Sunday for these type of yeah. meetings. Yeah. Old, and then they'll say that anti-social family meetings and so on. Sunday is our main day, working day. So when you call me on my main working hours, it's like calling somebody when he's working from 9 to 5 on Monday or Tuesday. It doesn't work. Yes, you come for whatever a meeting at 10 o'clock on Monday. It cannot work. All right? So, Sunday is our main working day. Amen. Amen. And Saturdays, pastors are working. We had weddings yesterday. How many weddings? Three weddings. Three weddings. That means you have to be at this wedding, this wedding, that wedding, all that. You can't say that we are rearresting on Saturday because that's at the time that the work comes. All right? Number two, ministry work consumes a large amount of time. All right? When an activity consumes just a few minutes of your time in a week, it cannot be called your work. For instance, I drive my car for a few minutes every day, but my work is not driving. I'm not a driver. I drive it for a few minutes to take me to work. But does not make me a, 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 that my profession is driving? But I drive. <laughs> so, if you are going to become a lay pastor or a shepherd, you must know that some significant amount of time, you have to give time. Yes. All right? If I'm to, be, if I'm to make driving a taxi... Or driving were to become my work. I will not spend less than eight hours a day driving. Then to me, driving would have become work. So you cannot claim to be part of the work of the ministry until it consumes a reasonable amount of time in the week. Give your weekends and your evenings to God. Yes. Why not as a lay person, give your weekends and some of your evenings to God significantly. I am asking you as the apostle of the church. I am encouraging you to give time to work for God. Yes. Give, give weekends. Give your Saturdays. Give your Sundays. Give Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, evenings, Fridays. Give time for the work. And, and someone said, why are you always going to church? Because I'm a worker. Church is not just attending things for me. But I am in the ministry. And I am working. I have become a shepherd. And I have become a pastor. Whether a lay pastor or a full time. I'm giving a significant amount of time. I'm a full time pastor. So I give all my time. A lay pastor you give some time. Amen. Amen. By the way, I want you to know that the UD, uh, the UD as you know it, today we have thousands of thousands of churches and thousands of members, literally. It was built by lay people. I want to tell you, it was built by lay people. People who are not paid. Yes. It has been built by lay pastors. The church that we enjoy. 
all over. Pastors, they, they do not give all their time, but they get enough time to, to be able to say that this person is a worker. Yes. Enough time. Almost every church in America was built by a lay, a lay pastor. Yes. Almost every church in England was built by a lay pastor. We, of course, we have some people full time. But a layman can give so much time that it becomes significant. You see, as a doctor, I could work for some hours in the hospital. And you see that I'm, I'm, I work in the hospital. And I, I do actually give some amount of time. Are you with me? Yes. I do. So, the fact that you are not paid by the church does not mean you cannot give time quality time and enough time to call it a job yes that is why many lay pastors at a point in their life they realize that they have two jobs i remember one of our pastors he told me that that was before he's now a bishop and he's in full-time ministry he said Every time he was at work, the people used to ask him, where, where, where do you work? Like, apart from the work you are doing here. They suspected him. They said, are you, are you a cab driver in the night? Are you, are, you, are you working for another organization? Do we not pay you enough? What, what, do, what do you do? Because they could see that this man who has come to work, he has another job. Yes. He's tired on Mondays, especially. All our lay pastors, the good lay pastors are like that. They are all good. Amen. Amen. Yes. That is it. Now, I'm explaining how the church was built. Every big church that is really large is built by lay people. Because you can never employ enough. Even now in the corona, pressure has started to build on our employment yes we are starting to feel some pressure because a lot of things are also shut yes and as much as we are still moving on but we can feel it do you understand yes so people who are lay pastors and god bless you you know lay pastors you see that like they have like they are people with two jobs why? It's because of the amount of time. As soon as you start to give enough time to something, it has become work. And you must accept to give time to it. And I'm calling on everybody here to join to give time to this work. Give enough time. Don't come and just say, I have to leave. Leave to go where? You have to be there. People need the Lord and people need attention and people need people who are giving their time. Don't be too big. Look, I remember one brother who died. You see, when you die, that's when you see what's important. Do you know that? Huh? I remember one of our lay pastors, he died. When he died, he had even become, I think, a professor or something. But at his death, you know, the professorship, the degrees, the jobs he had, nothing. It's like everything was God, church. God, church. And I was a bit surprised as I was watching the proceedings. It's like what will matter as you cross within either a few years or however soon it comes it's going to be what you do in the church and what you do for God. So give your time. If you are doing it, do it well. Because a time is going to come, you will say, I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back. But you can't go back. All right? Number three. If you are working in the ministry, you are going to expend energy and money. And I'm calling on you to spend money to come to church. Do you not spend money when you are going to your, your workplace? Huh? Do you not spend money when you are going to your workplace? Do you not spend energy? 
Everyone must realize that doing the work of the ministry involves spending a lot of energy. Do not be surprised if you get tired doing the work of a shepherd. It's only a sign that the activity has entered the realm of work. You have now begun to do the work of the ministry in Ephesians 4.11. Don't most jobs leave their employees tired after several hours? This is because it is called work. Another thing you will expend is money. Does it not cost you money to go to work? Do you not spend money at work for lunch every day? It is the same thing with the work of ministry. You will spend your money in order to do the work. Someone may say in the case of secular work, we expend money, but we get something back at the end of the month. Dear friend, your rewards and treasures will come one day in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 10. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. I do not believe and we still do not believe in giving money to lay people to help them to pay their transportation when visiting sheep or coming to church. There are some churches, the whole choir is giving money to come to church. All the instrumentalists are giving money to play. All the ushers are giving TNT. Everybody is giving money to, to do whatever because we say we spend money to come to the church. We come and we spend time here. We spend money coming to, to, to come to the Don't you spend money when you are going to your workplace? And where ministry is work. I'm supposed to prepare you to work. If it's nothing to you, God will say, okay, I will re- withdraw from treating you specially. Yeah. It can just be ordinary. Amen. Amen. When people are ordinary church members, where they're not spending money to come to church, why do you have to give them money when they're ashes? Why do you have to give people money when they are choristers? Any pastor who is giving money to choristers, giving money to musicians, is not a, a bona fide pastor of our church system. So if you are practicing that, you have gone astray. There's nothing like that in any of our churches anywhere. It will soon become as though you were hiring people to do a part-time job. If you keep on giving everybody whatever and they come to work to sing, to do whatever, soon it will be like you are, you are paying people for a part-time job. But people are working for the Lord, not doing a part-time job. You have not employed people to work. Very often, when you pay people, their attitude changes and the, it becomes more of, is this all I get for my hard work in the church? So when you are giving transportation of 20 cities, they look at the 20 cities and say, ah, all the time I've spent here, I've been here since morning, morning to evening, on Sundays, I come here, I never eat lunch in my house, I never see my house in the afternoon, on Sunday, I've not seen my house in the morning before, I've not seen my house in the daytime, I only see my house in the night. Uh, and all I've been given is 20 CDs. That's why you, you don't have to even give anything. Because the money you give is like an insult. Yes. I have decided to let those who work for him, the Lord pay those who work for him. Make no mistake about this. Praying, visiting, counseling, and interacting with people is hard work. As you do this work, you will expend energy and money. When you begin to feel tired, just remember that it is a sign that you are really working for God. Amen. Amen. As soon as tiredness comes, you know that, aha, I have entered the realm of what? Work. Which is a great uh, level to get to. As a lay person. Now, I'm mostly preaching to lay people. Don't think about full-time People, the full time we are few and will always be few compared to the lay person, pastors. Amen. Amen. The fourth characteristic of work is ministry work is repetitive and regular. It repeats and it comes on regularly. There are two different words. Repetitive means that you keep on doing the same thing. And regular means that it comes at the same intervals of time. Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday. And you see that it has become work. Yes. 
Yes, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday. See that it has become where at first it was like, hey, Charlie, we are going to whatever. After some time, you see that, hey, it's repetitive and it's regular. By nature, listen, are you watching? Because all this is coming from Ephesians 4 that God has given us the work of ministry. That means we are going to have something that has working hours, something that takes your time, something that expends your energy and time, and something that is repetitive and regular. By nature, all real work is repetitive and regular. If the ministry is work, it will have features which make it repetitive. Sometimes you may be bored, but you just have to keep on doing the work. Praying, visiting, counseling and interaction. There are times that I've been standing preaching, I start yawning. When I, when I, when I read the verse, I, <sighs> because it's repetitive for me. What I've said, I've said it before. I see the people, I know their reaction, I know their response, I know how many points I have to go through, so I feel tired even when I see the point, I say, my God and my Lord, save my, save your servant, save your anointed. <laughs> Yes, I'm telling you the truth. Huh? Many pastors, listen, many pastors don't pray much because they feel that it is repetitive and it is boring. But when prayer becomes your work, you have to repeat your prayers and you have to pray regularly. You see, as soon as it's prayer work, it becomes repetitive. The same thing you prayed last time, you see that you are praying the same thing again. Yes, that's when it has become work. Epaphras labored fervently. But if it's not prayer work, it will just be, oh, I mean, today this is an amazing God has given us a special revelation on dragons. So we are binding dragons. And, but after some time, we are taking the dragons on again. Before you realize, it's the 19th time that we are taking on the dragons. It's now become work. Because it's repeating. And it's regular. Yes. Confession of sins. We'll confess. Uh. You wait for Tuesday. We will confess our sins. Uh. You see that? <laughs> oh, you don't want to confess your sins again. Since you last confessed up to today, have you not sinned between the last confession and today's confession? Today? <laughs> so there is need for more confession. Confession of sins. Confession of our mistakes. We need prayer for the Holy Spirit every day. We prayed last time. We still need wisdom for today. So it is the nature of work for something to be going over and over and over. And I want to encourage everybody who is called a lay pastor. Listen. Thank God that you have entered the realm where the thing is repetitive. You go, you knock on the door, you visit people, you do whatever, but you see that it's the same work that I have to do. Yeah. There is a difference between a social visit to a friend's house and a pastoral visit. Pastoral visits must be re conducted repeatedly by shepherds. Shepherds must intentionally go to the homes of their members on a regular basis. No one ever told me what to do. I have naturally wanted to pray, to visit, and to counsel my people. Now that the church is much larger, I feel deprived when I'm not able to know all my sheep personally. I struggle to know their names and to remember who they are. I wish I could attend all important family events. Anyone who is a true pastor has a natural care and does not need to be supervised. Do we, don't we all go to work when we don't feel like it? Don't we all go to the same workplace repeatedly and regularly to sit on the same chair? Those who, those who move to their work at 5 a.m., don't they drive regularly to the same place? 6 a.m., they are moving. They go to the same place, open the same room and sit in front of the same computer. Don't they do that? They do it. In the same way, anyone who claims to be doing the work of the ministry must rise up and do the important work of a shepherd. We don't pray just because we feel like it. We pray because we have to. 
We must rise up early and intercede for the people God has given to us. Amen. Number five, characteristic of ministry work is supervised or unsupervised. Amen. In every field, a supervisor, there are two classes of working shepherds. Those who need supervision and those who don't need supervision. Amen. Amen. Now you can see that I am trying to supervise shepherds and pastors by what I'm preaching. I am encouraging us. You know, and I'm, I'm speaking, I thank God I have access to people, people who are under some of our pastors. Who, because of the way the pastor is, the, the church members may not hear from me directly. But because of the flow service, you are hearing me directly. And I'm telling you, and I'm calling on you, do you understand? To do the work of a shepherd. And to do it until it has these characteristics. Until you and you now you can see that Sunday is my working day. Yeah. You need to work for anybody who is, you know, one day a pastor went to visit one in one of our countries and then he got to church and they finished church and they went home. He was there for a few weeks. Then he called and said, the pastor in this country is not a real lighthouse pastor. Wow. I said, why? I said, oh, the afternoon, the church, the afternoon, they've closed in the afternoon, they've, they've gone home. He said, I mean, we I don't know, I, I, that's not, I don't know that culture that it's like he has a meeting by 12, 1 o'clock, everybody has gone. So he said, it's not a real pastor on, in Lighthouse. Yes. And, and it's like they've closed, everybody is gone. So he said, there's something wrong with the pastor. We should, we should check on it because he's not used to that. And he, there's something wrong with that church. That's how they knew. Because it's a working day. Sunday is a working day. There are people to visit. There are meetings to be held. There are endless issues to discuss. One ship can take three hours. Do you know that there are some people, they are time-taking ship. If the beloved comes to add, it can become four hours. Yes. And they, all these people are there. One person can take the whole day. Before you realize, by the morning, you have gone only one with two people. Yes. May you be an unsupervised shepherd. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Verse 7. Which have been no guide, no overseer, no ruler. You know, you must believe God that you'll be somebody who doesn't need to be supervised. You work in such a way, nobody is supervising you. But you are working. Common sense. Hard work. Diligence. Caring for the sheep. Visiting the people. Following them up. That's the work of a shepherd. And that's, nobody has to come and wind yourself. Everybody go on mass visitation. You yourself will be searching for people that no one should be lost under you. Amen. All work. Listen, are you listening to me? All work falls into two categories. Supervised or unsupervised. There are two classes of working shepherds. Those who need supervision and people who do not. In every field, the supervised person is paid less than the unsupervised. Decide to be a shepherd who does not need to be told what to do when to pray, whom to counsel. Your rewards in heaven will be even greater. Hallelujah. No, but no one ever tells me what to do in ministry. I have naturally wanted to pray, to visit and counsel. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 19. I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus and to that I may be of good concert, com comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded. Amen. I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Hallelujah. So God is calling on people 
Now, years have gone by. It's been 35 years. All that I have tried to do is to be a shepherd to people. Following these principles, I realize that. That is where I've come to. So, uh, the work of a shepherd, which is the four things, P-V-C-I, prayer, visitation, counseling, and interaction. These four pillars. Watch me. Are you listening? I'm telling you, I started with a lot of people. I started with a, God has blessed me and I've prospered just caring for people. Yes. Many people meet me, they want to just talk with me because they know that I care for them. Yes. I've been, I've been looking after people for a long time, before some of you were born. Yes. You people may not know. Jesus said, if you love me, if you love me, care for my sheep. Let me tell you something. All through, this is one of the reasons why when, um, even sometimes we have give thyself holy conferences, we have pastors' conferences. I rarely speak about shepherding. Yes, I rarely speak. I rarely talk about it. What people don't realize is that this is the key to showing God that you love Him. That people have neglected, caring for the sheep, feeding them. Talk. Even when I write books, I write out of the pastor's heart. Yeah. So that is why people enter the ministry and don't flourish. Because they are not shepherds. It's not from your heart. You don't care about nobody. You want a job or a title or a post? That's not why we are shepherds. If you are following, you see, you can never follow somebody until you follow his heart. Yes. As I'm in the first love church, what do the first love members have? What do they have? What do they own? I hardly know any first lover who owns a house and cars. Our, our church is made of buses. I stop talking about shepherding because I stand before people and I see that their ears cannot receive it. But if you ask me, what is the center of ministry? It's shepherding. It's the center which draws lovers. People who are committed to you for life. People who form the building blocks of churches. People who can be far away and they know that they have a certain commitment and a certain love. Yeah, shepherding. It, you see, it is the foundation. It's like preaching. It's the foundation. If you can't be a shepherd, you know, when you stand as an evangelist, you will not care for the people. Almost everybody who, whatever ministry you become, you have to pass through shepherding. Once you don't care for the people, how will you care for a soul? A soul has nothing to give you. A sheep maybe one day can give you something. You don't care for the people. You have not understood the greatest work. So I want to say that, you know, as I come to the end of, I'm coming to the end of the message, I'm just telling you something that this message is the message that most of the people who claim to follow me have not received. But those who have understood it, I, I, I always sense them because I can see this is a real shepherd. Yeah. I mean, some are lay pastors, some are full time. But if you get this one, you have got the basis of ministry. The basis of ministry. You know, Kenneth Hagin, he said one day he, he visited a church and the pastor gave him a place to stay. And where he was staying, I don't know how it was, but he could hear the pastor in his office counseling. I don't know why they said there was a, the wall wasn't very thick. So he could hear what they were saying. And he said that he would listen. 
And people would come to see the pastor and they would talk to the pastor. He said, complex things. And he used to wonder, what is the pastor going to say to these people <laughs> with these problems? You know? But he said that the pastor always knew what to say. Yeah. And he said that if you stay with the people, the people will stay with you. Yeah. You know, people don't want to say, how do you get this person? Because a person is more valuable than money. A person. A soul. And these are the souls that Jesus died for. When I see people who have no care for anybody, I see like an iron heart. An iron heart that doesn't care about anybody. Yeah. But when you see a shepherd who cares for the people, the preaching is based on the care. The talking is based on the care. It's not based on delivering a good message. It has given me sheep everywhere in the world. 92 countries and still counting. Where are yours? Yes. That are connected. I want to encourage you. No more dwelling carelessly. It makes God not treat you specially. Yes. No more taking it for granted. This great work of being a shepherd. All those who are lay pastors, arise from your slumber. Arise from your slumber. The older ones, arise from your slumber and care for the people. God really loves his people. I tell you, that story of Jesus Christ talking to Peter after he rose from the dead, is the story, it's like telling me your mother who is dead or your father who is dead came back, sat in your room and had a conversation with you. Asked you, do you love me? No, you don't love me. If you love me, do this. Do you love me? No, no, no. The man was dead and he has recorded the story of the Jesus rising from the dead and coming back to talk about shepherding. And before Jesus died, he said, everybody you gave me, I've kept them all. I've not lost even one of these people. They're all with me still. They're all with me. Except the son of perdition. That's why I even believe that a lot of people that have left, many of them have come to say sorry. And a lot of people even who have left now will come back. Yes. It's only a son of perdition that you lose. And it's not a common thing to be a son of perdition. It's not common. Sounds of perdition are few. It's a rare thing. It's not anoint. You know, one day a pastor told me he's been invited to preach. And I, and I told him something. I said, look, when you go, I, I sense that he wanted to perform. Do you understand what I'm saying? He wanted to do what? Perform. Like he's really ministered well. Powerfully. Forget about performing. Forget about performing. Care. Care for the Lord and care for the people. I've rarely been invited anywhere that I was not invited back. Over and over and over. Until I myself say I can't come. Yes. This is the center of all ministry. Anybody who calls yourself a pastor in this church... This is the center to care for the people, to pray, to do the caring, the visiting, praying, interaction from your heart until you are tired, until it is repetitive, until your energy is gone, your time is consumed, until you can see that, <laughs> I mean, no one supervises you to care for somebody. Yes. This is the call of God. I'm telling you, if you ask me, what am I at the base? My first love is shepherding. That's why I started the first love church. Because the Holy Spirit said to me, go back to your first love. My first love, I go for weddings. Yesterday I was at a wedding. My first love, I do marriage counseling in, first, in my first love. But I love to talk to people and try to help them 
to, 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 to do well and to be happy. Most people are not happy. In my first love, as I'm caring for people, I will try to help them to have beloveds. Yeah. It's natural for me. That's shepherding. Yeah. You know, you know that when you, when you help somebody to marry, and I mean the marriage works, they always look to you and say, if it was not for this person, I will not, I will not, I will not be married. Yeah. Or if it was not for this, I could not even stay married. Yeah. Don't shy away from this work, oh. This is the greatest, if you ask me, what the greatest center of all my ministry is being a shepherd. But I realize that when I start talking about it, people start yawning. Yes, it's amazing. Because I realize that that is the real love. And it's the love for, for God that we don't have. We don't have love for God. To stand in the pulpit and be famous, we have it. But to love people and to care for people. To set for them, to think about them, to think about them, to think about them, how to see them, how to talk to them, how to have time for them, how to love them. That's the part you see that people don't have that part. That's the part they don't have. To stand in the pulpit and be famous, yes. But to care for the people, no. Are they lost? Are they okay? Is everybody okay? Is everybody all right? Where are they? Where are they? Many years ago, some of you know Bishop Blake in America, in California. He came to Ghana with a team, a whole bus, one or two buses full of African-Americans. He came to Ghana. When he arrived, we met him at the VIP at the airport. And we were leaving. So from the VIP, go. he said, no, 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 where are my people, please? I said, oh, they are, we told him they are being taken. I said, oh, no, I need, I need to be sure. He left. I said, once to see, we went to see them. Is everybody okay? Have you got your luggage? Everybody okay? That's a shepherd. Oh. That's, a, that's why he has that huge church in California. That's why Denzel Washington and all those guys go to his church and Stevie Wonder. And nobody goes to your church. He left the VIP. Went to check people's luggage. Are you okay? It's like, I mean, an old man. Are you okay? Is everybody okay? Is everybody, he always, he, he has a private, we're in a private car. He always wants to go to the bus to see that everybody is okay in the bus. That's the shepherd. That's the heart that people don't have. And you don't know that that is where you are demonstrating the love of God. Because that's the love that Jesus has for his people. But he doesn't have anybody to show that love to them. When we pray for the nations, I just imagine if there was a shepherd in Thailand, a shepherd in this country who is talking to the people, loving the people, helping them, showing them something, talking to them. Oh, if only they'll get somebody. I pray that you will take up this opportunity, you know, and, and become a shepherd. So, I me and my little family, your little family, your little family can turn, all your children can become monsters. Oh, Oh, all can become uncontrollable if you don't know. And that's why Jesus said, these are my children. Care for my children. Look after my, pray for them. Pray for them. Visit them. Talk to them. Rub them for me. Do you know a shepherd is supposed to, you see the sheep standing there. If you kill him, he'll be killed. What do you do to him? He will be done. That's why wicked people can do bad things to sheep. But the shepherd is supposed to take oil and pour it. Thou anointest my head with oil. The Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd anoints me with oil. That shepherd in the Middle East, they take this oil and they pour it on the sheep and wrap them. And the oil, the smell of the oil drives away the flies. So that the, the sheep are harassed by the flies and the itching. But Thou anointest my head with oil, wraps them. So you wrap them, you feed them, you wrap them, you care for them, you protect them. That's where loyalty and all these things come in. It's to protect the sheep from wicked wolves. I want to encourage you to believe in shepherding. I can say, you know, I don't want to say something bad, but I feel a large number of people who are called pastors, they don't understand anything about shepherding. They don't have the feeling from the heart. They've not allowed that feeling to enter. The post, yes. Get a post, be called pastor, be called reverend, be called this. Yes. 
Wear collar, wear this, wear this, wear this. Look at me, how many times do I wear collar? How many times do I wear those bishop, all those things? What is the use of all these dresses if you are not really a shepherd in your heart? The Bible says, let them make garments to consecrate Aaron and his sons. In other words, to make the garments and the garments separate him to the job. Make him really separated to such a work for me. Not to, to make him better than other people, but to show that he's been separated for the work of God. Prosperity, it comes from God. The help, it comes from God. God notices our heart and he sees. So I want to encourage everybody who is listening to me, both officially appointed pastors and not appointed. When you are genuinely a pastor, you don't need a post. You don't need a title. You don't need, you know, you don't need nothing. And I can tell you, every title I've taken, it was to bring order in the church. I needed it to bring order. But not that who I, I am. Hallelujah. So, receive the mantle of a shepherd. Yes. Receive the caring. Let the iron spirit that you have be softened into a soft mantle of a carer. Uh, somebody who cares about people. Receive that grace. Receive that ability. And receive that interest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ne let never come out of your mouth. I'm tired. Or I'm tired of these people. Or I'm tired of this thing. No, no, no. That is all that God has prepared you for. To be a carer and a lover of the people of God. And the people that are saved and washed by the blood of the Lamb. Receive the principal anointing. Yes. The principal first anointing. The anointing of a shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. Receive the grace to have more children than your own children. Receive the grace to carry and ca carry the people. To carry the people. Receive the grace to carry them. To carry them on your bosom. Carry them on your shoulders. Carry them above the waters. Carry them when they are drowning. Carry them when they are going down. When nothing is working. Carry them when they are drowning. Receive the grace to dive, to dive, to dive. To dive and save those who are in the waters. Receive the grace to rescue from dragons, from wicked men, wicked wolves, the sheep that Jesus loves. Receive the power to be a shepherd of many. Receive a shining face like the face of Moses. Ah, a shepherd of God's people, faithful in his house. Receive the first love, the first love, the first love. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Receive that grace. Peter, do you love me? Receive him. Receive the grace. Receive the heart of Jesus Christ. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Receive that heart from Jesus. Receive that heart, little girl. Receive that heart, little boy. And let your eyes and your mind go beyond your own little problems and your own life till the lives of others become your life and the concerns of others become your concerns receive it receive it in the name of jesus savior of the world i am the good shepherd and you shall also be a good shepherd in jesus name i pray amen Hallelujah. Father, thank you for everybody that has been a part of this service. And I thank you that you will use everyone here to do your great work of shepherding. We are rising, Lord. Every, every standing, stand in your house. Lift your hands. You are rising and rising into work. You are rising into work. Shepherding will not be something far from you. No, 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 no. You'll be a keeper of sheep. A shepherd of his people. You work until you are tired. 
You work until you have spent your money, your own money, to care for the people. You work until you have spent energy. You work until your time is gone. <laughs> until people say, wonder what job you are doing. Father, I thank you for all those that are part of this great commission to be shepherds like never before. Bless the lives of all true shepherds and let them grow up to see that loving you and loving your people is the same thing. We receive the love, Lord. For how can you say that you love God whom you have not seen? When the one you can see, you have no love for the person. Thank you for raising up true shepherds. Receive the grace and receive the power in Jesus' name. Amen. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ? Pastor, pray with me. But before we do that, I feel the shepherd anointing. Listen, look at me, everybody. Look, 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 look on your screen. You know, there is a feeling I feel here for sheep. I wish you also have that feeling. Place your hand on your belly. Father, give everyone watching that feeling for people and for the sheep that you've called us to. Give them a, a heart, a feeling for the people that they will not be lost, that they will not perish, that they will not be forsaken, that they will not go astray. Give everyone watching that spirit, that heart of a shepherd and I thank you for what you have done Lord I thank you for your power that has entered every life every person every pastor every person the, the feeling Lord that I have Lord that comes to me when I see even from any country and I see the people Lord I dream about them and I feel for them something. I wish for them to be cared for and to be preached to and to be loved. That is an anointing, Lord. Let that come upon everyone watching right now. Receive that impartation and be filled with the grace of God upon your life to be a great shepherd. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord, and I give you that grace today. In Jesus' name, amen. As every head is bowed, if you want to give your life to Jesus, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. Cleanse me from every evil. Cleanse me from my sin. From today, I am born again. I give my soul and my heart and my life to you, Jesus. Please write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, please look on the screen. There's a number, plus 233, which is Ghana. And then 56056 or 033-3079. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Father, thank you for the blessing of being shepherds today. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to take your Holy Communion. Take your Holy Communion. I want you to take your Holy Communion. Take your bread. Amen. You, you may be seated actually for a moment.
Jeremiah chapter 9. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth. The manna is the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven and gavest them water for their thirst. Verse 21. Yea, Forty years Bye. thou didst sustain them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old and their feet swelled not. Amen. Thou gavest them kingdoms and nations and divided them into corners. Right now, as we take the bread, he says, he's, you sustained them. Amen. Amen. And withheld not your manna. And they lacked nothing. And their feet swelled not. Your feet swelling is, first of all, old age. Huh? Kidney disease. Liver disease. Heart disease different types of cancers, uh, malnutrition can cause that, hypoproteinemia, almost every sickness can lead to foot swelling. So that one symptom that he mentioned has covered your blood because it's something from your blood. You get it? Yes. Something from your kidneys, your kidneys, livers, uh, heart. What again? And when the foot is swollen, there can be chest, water in the chest, water in the stomach, water in the legs. So that symptom alone speaks of total healing, the absence of that one thing. Amen. And today as we take the bread, May this be your portion. Standing, every standing. Father, we stand in the wilderness and receive our manna, divine provision. For those who believe it, it is a true blessing. And we thank you. Heal us and bless us as we receive the bread that came down from heaven in the mighty name of Jesus the body of Jesus Christ. Now, take the wine, the blood, the right to be forgotten. The right for your sins to be forgotten and remembered no more. Father, we lift up the blood. Let our sins be forgotten as far as the east is from the west. And let us receive your mercy and your love and your healing. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands for your blessing. May you have a good spirit and a good heart. May your heart be able to receive the anointing of the shepherd, the mysterious anointing which few people have is actually the grace of Jesus Christ. Whatever Jesus had, receive it now. For he sent his son to save you, to heal you, and to deliver you. Be blessed with that anointing to rise into your highest place 
in the ministry. I release you from your past. I release you from your mistakes. I release you from your sins. And in place of your wretchedness, you shall love the Lord and you shall love his people. May this blessedness be upon you and your life. Whatever represents that sickness and a disease, receive healing, receive forgiveness. May your sins be remitted today and now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We are going to receive our offer. Heavenly Father, thanks a million for this opportunity to receive an offering. I want you to take out a special project offering. There are many, many projects that we are involved with. Um, building churches everywhere. Why? Let me ask you, why build churches? Because there are no meeting places in many of the places. You know, one of the things that I was told in the northern part of Ghana was that other religions have built their temples. And when, as soon as those temples are built, people who are supposed to be Christians go there. Because there's no church. Do you understand? Yes. So now that our churches are also being built all over the northern, what do you call it, and so on, you see that people are coming to the church and it's uh, coming there beautifully. All right? So there are so many churches and buildings. Just you can see a few of them quickly, very quickly. Just uh, places all over. All this, when you see Catch the Anointing, Northern Region, many, many buildings. Uh, Bongo. Bongo. Do you, have you heard of Bongo? Who built the Bongo Church? Yeah, pastored by Pastor Clement and Marie, Dr. Marie. Keep many, 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 many. Bukborongo, um, Boya, Chakori, Dafiama, I mean, Garinkuka, Chakbukbondo, many, all these are being built. Jama and Kwanta, Kadi Boku, all right, Karaga, many, many churches. Tumu, you've heard, some have heard of Tumu. All these are projects. Vawari, Vawari, beautiful, pastored by, financed by Eric Kofi. Wow, beautiful so many buildings and I want you to give your offering today as we see all these churches are being built and they are um, going on hallelujah this is a way to give your offering by now everybody who wants to give knows how to give alright not here <laughs> all right father we thank you as we give our offering today in the mighty name of jesus christ amen i want us to welcome a choir from where all right god bless you
blessed by the ministration do you want to be god's favorite child oh i can't feel you do you want to be god's favorite child and i believe the key has been revealed to us shepherds i believe we've been so blessed thank you so much prophets it's always a blessing you're always giving us what to really chase after and what god really wants thank you so much i believe right now we are going to observe the announcements from Madam X. So let's welcome Madam X to present the announcement. As for Bowie, as for Bowie, and about too late, 
and about too late. All right. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the flow announcement. If today is your first time of joining us online for service, thank you very much for doing so, and I ask that you kindly send a text message to the phone number plus two three three five six zero triple three zero seven nine plus two three three five six zero triple three zero seven nine. Thank you very much for watching with us today. You're welcome. This is the First Love Church. You heard from our daddy, our prophet, our personal person, our bishop, our missionary. Bishop Dad, he what knows, make some noise. All right. Thank you very much. We're happy that we shared it with you today. And so please join us again next Sunday and be blessed. And kindly remember to send a text message to the phone number. Thank you. All right. If you gave your life to Christ today, just say congratulations. Thank you very much for doing so. It's a bold decision in the right direction. It's the best decision you'll ever take in your life. Thank you very much for doing so. And I ask that you kindly send a text message to the phone number plus 233-560-33079. Plus 233-560-33079. We have pastors on standby waiting to pray with you and help you become a strong Christian. Thank you very much for taking this bold decision. God bless you. Wedding bells, wedding bells, wedding bells. Oh my God, like they have been announcing so many less fantastic, amazing weddings. And clearly, the prophecies of our Father have been coming to pass. And I pray that we keep on receiving and be blessed. All right. As I announce the wedding bells, if they are in your ministry, can you make some noise? Like shout so loudly that we can hear your neighbors be like, what's going on? And you answer them, the prophecies of our Father are coming to pass. All right. Wedding bells, wedding bells, wedding bells. Ebenezer Apple. A telepastry ministry member is getting married to Helen Abusakina of the Greater Love Gospel Choir. I cannot wait till the day when I will say, My beloved is mine, and I am his. Oh, my beloved is mine. They're getting married on the 18th of July 2020. The venue is the first love wedding space with Paige. The time is 12 p.m. and their colors are purple and peach. If you have any just cause why these two should not be joined together at Holy Matrimony, please speak now or forever hold you. Alright, Thomas Project Collins, formerly of the Greater Love Gospel Choir, is getting married to Rebecca Lauren Asset. Formerly of the Communion Stars. They're getting married on the 11th of July 2020. The venue is a first love center. The time is 10 a.m. and the colors are blush, pink, and gray. If you have any just cause why these two should not be joined together at Holy Matrimony, please speak now or forever hold your key. All right. When I say, what is our vision? You kindly respond, 190 nations. What is our vision? What is our vision? All right. If you strongly feel the call of God in your life to be part of the 190 Nations vision as a missionary to any of these countries, kindly send a text message to any of the numbers below. Plus 233-547-871212. Plus 233-547-871212. Or plus 233-247. 306005 plus 233-247-306005. Please send a text message to any of these numbers to respond to the call of God and be blessed. Alright, no prayer meeting with our daddy. Make some noise. 
Alright, so we've been blessed with a slow prayer meeting. We're taking territories. We are being blessed in these times. It's very, very important. And so I ask that you kindly join us this Tuesday and every Friday at 3.30 a.m. GMT, 11.30 p.m. EST, 11.30 a.m. CST. Otherwise, kindly Google 3.30 a.m. GMT, my time, wherever you are in the world. These are very, very important prayer meetings with life-changing testimonies. And so please make a point to join us. Set a recurring alarm. There's nothing like I want to sleep. Please, in the face of prayer, in the times of COVID-19 and what the world is today, kindly remember to set a recurring alarm. Join the prayer meeting as we take territories and be blessed by prayer meetings with our daddy, our father, our prophet. Thank you very much. As for bowing, as for bowing, and about too late, and about too late, all right. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you had an amazing time in the presence of the Lord? Revival at 7 at 7.30. Make some noise. Amen. I can't wait for revival. And I know you at home cannot wait. So please call on your friends who are not even able to join. That there's revival at 7 at 7.30. And I believe it's going to be a blessing. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, fellowship, contribution, participation, the 25,000 children, which includes all the important people for my life, and the first love of the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Many are called. Yeah. <laughs>